you have to kind of have faith in yourself um, in, in what you're trying to do. I think it is a struggle and um, you have to, you have to just keep, I said, you have to keep the enjoyment alive. Uh, that's the other thing I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Um, and have, have as much fun as possible because if you're, if you're enjoying it, if you're enjoying this, this game of creating something um, out of ink and paper, if you, if you, if you get a real fire inside you when you do it, then the chances are you will be able to pass that, that excitement on to someone else. So, um, you know, you just have to, just have to keep the fire burning. If you're struggling to move forward in life, this podcast is for you. I'm Seth Adam Smith, and this is Forward. So a couple of years ago, I actually had the opportunity to interview one of my favorite authors. His name is Jonathan Stroud. He's the author of several series of children's books, one of them called the Bartimaeus Sequence. You may have heard of that. Um, another one is called Lockwood & Co. Now, I, I love uh, a good ghost story. Um, now, when I, I say a good ghost story, I think I have to sort of qualify that. I, I, I don't like um, horror, the horror genre. Um, I don't like a slasher film or anything like that. Um, I don't like gratuitous uh, violence or anything. I, I like, I like a good mystery, right? A good mystery that's solved. Um, and and I, if possible, I, I would like it if if the story sort of left you feeling better about life at the end, rather than sort of dark and dreary and 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 destitute and and so I was I was pleasantly surprised when I stumbled across. Uh, Jonathan Stroud's Lockwood & Co. series. It's a series of five books, uh, and the premise of these books is that um, it's an alternate universe, uh, London, a United Kingdom, where um, there's a problem of ghosts, right? There's, there's ghosts that are, are springing up all over the country, and the only ones who can see and respond to them are, are youth, some like between the ages of 8 and, and um, 16, 18 um, and so one of these groups is called Lockwood and Co. And they, it, the, the books follow their, their, uh, adventures as they go and, and stop these ghosts and sort of learn, um, about a larger problem that's happening. So one of the things I really liked about Jonathan Stroud's series, uh, was just the, the interaction between, um, this crew, uh, Lockwood and Co., um, you know, they're, they're teenagers, right? They're, and they've got their own personalities and they're friends and they're dealing with these very uh, horrifying situations. Uh, but there's so much humor in it that it just, it could be scary one second and then completely humorous and funny the next. And, and all of it sort of worked together at the end. Every, every book really work together to, to make it this life-affirming book. And in fact, um, in the interview, Jonathan Stroud, that's how he described it and how he described the books in the series. And so that's what I really appreciated. I, I loved, loved the books and I, and I loved um, my opportunity to interview Jonathan Stroud. Now, there's, there's a portion of the interview I want to share with you uh, where he talks about the books and, and then uh, at a later date, we actually had a second part of the interview. And, and it was in that interview that, that Jonathan said a lot of really profound things about, uh, about you know, chasing your passion and, and you know, writing and, and really why it is we do what we do. Um, anybody, you know, what, what life is all about, what all of this work and all of this moving forward is all about. And, and in that interview, that was the interview I really appreciated the most. And I've thought about that um, and some of the things that he said in that. I've thought about that again and again, and I wanted to share it with you. And my hope is that in sharing uh, this interview with you is that it will inspire you to move forward in the dreams and things that you are pursuing. It's more than just uh, a ghost story, right? This is all life affirming. Where did you get the inspiration for Lockwood and Co? 
Well, I, I'd always uh, enjoyed ghost stories. And for a long time, I'd been kind of itching to do one of my own. Um, and I, I, I sort of sat down one day and began writing my way into it. And usually what happens is I'll just improvise and I'll I'll just uh, see what happens. I'll, I'll, I'll do a scene, I'll throw a couple of characters together, see what happens when they interact. And I began uh, one day a few years ago with a scene with two two kids, a boy and a girl, uh, wearing modern clothes, um, but with with swords, uh, which was quite exciting, coming up to the door of a, of a house in London, knocking on the door, and they're going to go in and, and fight a ghost. Um, and I like this scene, about three pages long. Um, I had no idea where the story was going to go. I didn't know who these kids were or why there were no adults. You know, it was it was just this kernel of a of a scene. But I like the fact that my kids were the protagonists and that they were empowered. You know, they had they had they had weapons, they had kit they were going to use to uh, deal with the supernatural enemy. So uh, from that single point, um, th this whole series began. And and then how you played it off um, with the humor, with everyone's humor, with all of their personalities. And then that final scene where they're all. I mean, it's the resolution. It's the end of the book where they're all at the table, all of them. Yeah. And they're all talking yeah. to each other just as they would a normal day. Really, they're just they're they're talk they're talking about everything and going about their business. And it just there's the sense of completion that like, this is this is right. This is a good this is a good scene. This is how it's supposed to be. So I I, I think that was a a great way to. I'm really happy you, you I'm really happy you say that. I think I think it's um. You know, for, as far as the, the series went, you know, I, 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 as I wrote it, I realised that it was really important to uh, balance the all the kind of dark, sinister, um, morbid, um, you know, scary stuff with something that that, that uh, was much more light and life affirming, and and the the, the the symbol of it is them sitting around the table. You know, eating some cream buns and um, donuts, and you know, making stupid jokes, and 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 that was the you know that that's, that was the thing that that I that I came to rely on as a really important um, uh, element. So you, you know, I felt that exactly that that you had this sort of big uh, epoch making you know ending with all the sort of excitement going on, but at the end of the day, it comes back down to our friends sitting at the table. And, you know, as a reader, you want to join them. You want to be there at the end of the table, cup of tea in hand, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> jam tart or whatever. Yeah. And you're part you're part of that that group. And it's, uh, you know, it's a satisfying way of, of, of just tying it up gently. Well, there's another there's another uh, book series I like to read and it's five books. But when I get to the fifth book, that's when a lot of the characters start dying off. <laughs> and and so I I still love the series, but it's it's really hard for me to read the fifth book because yeah. there's just this sense of loss. But with this um, with this book, I, I mean, I can always reread the fifth book because there's not that there's not this. It's just this feeling of of like you were saying, life affirming. Like there's this there is a sense of completion, but it's yeah. not it's not this loss or this pain at the end. It's a continuation. I yeah, I'm, I'm glad you say that because I suppose, you know, I, I was writing it, but I, I didn't fully understand that until I had, you know, uh, got to the end of the fifth book. I realized when I was rereading, I thought, no, I, I can't, I have to, I have to sort of honor that um, yeah. commitment. It's like an emotional commitment that you make to your, to your readers. And, um, yeah. you know, there, there, of, co of course, there are some, there are some books, some series, some uh, uh, works where the, the the commitment involves uh, loss and emotion. You know, so, something much more hard hitting, yeah. and that that that's that's correct. But in I realised in this case, yeah. I was doing something different, and um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of nice in a way that as a as the as the author, I still um, had things to learn from it myself. Right, right at the end, um, uh, I was just lucky. I managed to get it done before my editors came around and beat me over the head with a with a with a hammer. I, so look, I I have kids. I have two kids, and I I can't get anything done when I'm home ever. <laughs> and and so I have to ask, how is it possible uh, that that you um, are a best selling author? How do you write? How do you get things done? How do you get novels created? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I, I kind of wonder that myself, um, really. Um, uh, it, sometimes it doesn't 
work. Um, uh, as, as I'm sure you know, you know, there, there's just too many, too many things. You, you're being pulled in too many different um, directions. Right. I mean, I think you, if you're a writer, you, uh, you, you have to be adept at some point. You've got to be adept at, at kind of just closing everything else off and um, sitting in a very boring room, which in my case is my little study upstairs. Um, just sort of falling into into this world that you're that, that, that you're creating. A, a friend of mine, um, who's a, a playwright called Simon Stevens, um, he years ago he, he we were we were at some thing together, and he he sort of turned to me and he sort of said, "Of course, you know, um, uh, it's all about it's all about your family. Um, uh, everything else is just a sideshow." Um, and you know, he's absolutely that stuck with me. He's absolutely right because you know you can have all the success that you dream of as a writer as um well as anything um but ultimately the thing that that actually makes you get up in the morning and um you know feel like your life is worthwhile is um is is the family and and your your children so um you know i found in fact funnily enough the the six my period of success as a writer has almost identical been almost identical with my period of having a family i my wife um uh gina well before we got married my wife actually um took me to one side and said if you want to be a writer you know I, i'll support you you can you can give up your job and um uh she she would look she would earn us some money and i would, I would spend a year being trying to be a, be a writer and make it work so i wouldn't even become a writer if it wasn't for her actually um giving me that um uh that declaration of faith you know wow. she she would let me go and do it give it a try if it didn't work out that's fine she you know we, we would do something different um but but she gave me the, the the strength of purpose to go off and become a writer and then we got married and um, i i became a success with my bartimaeus books um and my, uh, my daughter was born in the same in the same year so i've always had this this kind of twin um these, these these twin things that that uh, um, make my life sort of ground ground me really ground my life the, the enjoyment of working um, and the enjoyment of of being with people that I that I love um, obviously being a writer faith is it's completely solitary um, in order to in order to sort of have the energy and the the commitment for that solitary pursuit you you I think you need to go away and recharge the batteries and that means being with you know emotionally recharged with with, with your with your loved ones so uh you know I, I i for me anyway it's it's the two go absolutely hand in hand so so tell me um and you may have already answered this through your through your answer just recently but what is your favorite thing about being a published author well i suppose um the the the, the, the moment that um the moment that I remember as, as being um, most special, curiously enough, actually, with my first novel, which was called Buried Fire, that I wrote, um, getting on for you know twenty years ago, um, and um, I got I got sent a proof, uh, you know, a kind of galley copy um, by my publisher before it came out. So I, I don't know six months before, and it was the first time ever I'd seen any of my stuff actually in a genuine book format and that was quite a moment that that really was quite special to to think that i had created something which existed in in book in book form yeah. um so uh, thereafter the thing that really I, I i enjoy is this sense of of um of my my books being sort of going out into the world and being listened to by the grand canyon or being read by somebody in um uh indonesia or australia or japan or you know you you there's, there's this that blows my mind really that that there are people in far off countries that i will never visit um who who have read the stories that i've created in a my little drab um uh home counties england study you know um that that is quite a magical feeling um to have to have sent something out across the world so that's really the thing that um you know keeps me warm at night when i'm struggling with you know, the latest project have there been times when you get discouraged particularly about i mean you know just 
maybe there was a publishing deal or idea or something that didn't go through and and how did you handle that discouragement um sure you know you're never going to you're never going to achieve the same level of success all the time you know regardless of, of who you are or what what you do you're going to get peaks and troughs and yeah. um i've i've had those periods where i'm working on a project which has really um has really not uh not been working and um i i've got very kind of fraught by it um and usually what happens is that means that there's some key um some key part of the book isn't isn't right you know some decision i made early on that actually is, was incorrect and everything else is, is sort of wrong because of it so sooner or later what happens is i have to um take a step away. Usually I'll talk to my wife, give it to my wife to read, discuss it with her, get get her opinion. And usually out of that, you know, comes the answer where I think, oh, okay, that's it. Uh, I can get rid of that character or I um, have to change. Um, I can't remember if I told you this before, but one of my Bartimaeus books um, began life as a series of short stories and um, uh, it wasn't working. It did no, nothing, nothing quite meshed. And I, I finally twigged that I had to scrap the whole concept and just take one of the stories and make that into a into a proper full novel once i'd made that decision once i'd binned all the all that work that i've been doing for months it was a hard it's a hard moment but once you once you have that insight then it becomes easy again you go oh okay fine i, I now know what i'm doing so um you know yeah you, you you obviously have bad moments but you you just keep working and you you soon find a way around them the, the basically the final question is what advice do you have for uh, beginning or struggling authors and writers who are who are either struggling to write their book or struggling to publish their book what what would you say to them as as, as sort of a encouragement uh, to move forward okay well um, you know I think the first thing to say is that all all writers um, uh, go through that phase and you know we've, we've all been there um, either a starting out not quite knowing what your voice is what kind of writer you are um, and b having the difficulty of how to how the heck to get something published um, and you know you, there are endless accounts of how J.K. Rowling sent Harry Potter to I don't know, 11 different publishers, and they all said no, and then finally, you know, it was, it was taken, and the rest is history. And um, in my in my, in my my sort of less extreme case, you know, I my first novel, I wrote it um, when I was in my mid, mid-20s. mid um, I gave it to, to a publisher. They absolutely tore it apart, and uh, I put it away for a year. But I didn't throw it away. I came back to it later. I, I, I read it. I thought, no, I, I'm going to I'm going to try again. And finally, I found someone who who saw through the imperfections and the fact that it needed a lot of work. And she she gave me you know, the opportunity to re, rework it and ultimately to publish it. So you have to kind of have faith in yourself, um, in, in what you're trying to do. Um, don't lose sight of of what what you want to write you know the kind of book the kind of story that you that you've got this itch to um to tell um so you have faith but you then also just have to kind of uh, accept that the the road to publication is a is a sort of an uncertain one and you just have to keep plodding away talking to people showing it to people getting advice taking the advice or not taking it if you feel like what you've done is actually good you know you stick to your guns um and you keep you keep keep working try something different if that one hasn't worked you try it you try a different thing you just plod away um and you know you get your reward ultimately so so i, th I think it is a i think it is a struggle and um you have to you have to just keep i said you have to keep the enjoyment alive uh, that's the other thing i'd say yeah, yeah. you know you play you play around with what you're doing you try different things you you experiment with what kind of a voice you know you you actually have as a writer um and have have as much fun as possible because if you're if you're enjoying it if you're enjoying this this game of creating something um out of ink and paper if you if you if you get a real 
fire inside you when you do it, then the chances are you will be able to pass that that excitement on to someone else. So, um, you know, you just have to just have to keep the fire burning. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode of Forward. Uh, I hope that you will actually pick up and read Jonathan Stroud's books, not just Lockwood and Co., but again, the Bartimaeus sequence. And I will have a link in the description of this video or this podcast. Um, And if you liked this episode, please share it with your friends, with your family, Uh, really anybody. It doesn't have to be your friends' family. It could be people you don't like. Share this episode with them. Um, And if you can, give this show a five-star review. Uh, Again, thank you for watching.